cities have their crime problems. The bigger the city, the greater the problem. Like the tropical jungle which is ever threatening to encroach on civilization, the inroads of juvenile delinquency are so great and so rapid that it is not enough to check it. It must be conquered. The pace of life in the big city forms an ideal breeding ground for the start of anything that might violate the law. Here is a typical example. These young girls, rounded up by the police the night before, are from tough neighborhoods, born on the wrong side of the street and raised along its sidewalks. These girls learn fast. They know how to fight with their knees, their elbows, their teeth, how to hold a blackjack, how to spot a cop, how to roll a marijuana, and even how to lure a man into a dark hallway. They can't hold down a job to make money. So, with a gun in one hand, they go out to make it. They are girl delinquents of a new type. Their names may be different, but they are under arrest for the same thing, armed robbery. Here for the first time is a dramatic picture of the extended nature of this new teenage problem. This is a story of delinquency with a new twist. The story of gun girls. Looks like you've been mugged. Let's go down to the station and make out a report. No, no, officer. Nothing happened. Guess I had one drink too many. I'm telling you the same thing I just told your friends, Dora Jones and Joy Jenkins and their folks. This is the last time I will release you in the custody of your parents. One offense leads to another, and in no time you become involved in a major crime. Continuous disrespect for law and order is a shortcut for a prison term. Girl delinquents are made by their upbringing and surroundings. I admit that family in modern and well-to-do circumstances produce delinquents, just as those families in the lower income brackets do. Some parents have no sense of shame, it is true. And when that is the case, we should take stronger measures in order to make them realize and fulfill their responsibilities. Our girl is a good girl, and we do all we can for her. Unfortunately, she got acquainted with those other girls, the wrong kind of girls. They're the ones that have been leading our daughter into trouble. Please understand that the parole board is working in your interest. Remember that parole is a privilege, not a right. I assure you, sir, I know it will never happen again. I know our daughter will obey all the rules and regulations of the parole board. I understand. But you must remember, today we live in the jungle. We are judged by the company we keep. The more reason why youth should choose his company with the greatest care. Juveniles who become delinquents are, as a rule, the sons and daughters of unconcerned parents who accept children as a matter of course. As these juveniles grow older, they do worse things and think in bigger terms. They are the young people who sooner or later will become the thugs of tomorrow. You promised me you'd quit running around with that girl, Teddy. Don't you get tired of telling me that. If I didn't like you, I wouldn't bother. Jimmy, I sometimes wonder if you mean that. Yes, I do. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just wasting my time. You're so busy with Teddy, I hardly see you anymore. You're always picking on Teddy. She's my friend. If you'd ask my brother, he'll tell you she always hangs around bad company. Just because your brother is a probation officer gives him no right to pick on her. She never fails to visit his office every week, and neither do I, for that matter. I know. I, well, I just mentioned it for your own good. Look, she's an older girl. She's already got you in one jam. That's why you have to visit my brother's office every week. Well, I, I wouldn't be telling you this, except that, well, I, I think an awful lot of you. 
I know you mean well, Jimmy, and maybe your brother's right. But it's going to take a little time. I'll try. Can I count on that as a promise? Oh, I do like you, Jimmy. Just give me half a chance. What do you say we figure out how much loot we've got so far? For one thing, we have this wristwatch. Remember the sucker we conked in the alley that night? I'll never forget it. You know, I was sure scared. It was the first time I ever lured a man in an alley. I'm hip, but there's a first time for everything, honey. Not bad. Should bring us a few dollars. Now, with what we have here, plus what we picked up last week, we can go by the two rods. You mean the two guns you were talking about? Yeah. Oh, I almost forgot. Just some more loot. Where'd you get it? Oh, well, earlier in the afternoon, I had a drink with some jerk in a booth. The rat wanted a cheap thrill. Honestly, the characters one meets nowadays. How am I doing? For a beginner, you certainly do all right. Won't be long before you equal the best of them. But what if these things come out in the papers? Things like this happen a dozen times a night. They don't even rate the ink. So why worry? But if we're not careful, we're bound to get caught. Those jerks will never complain. They're too panicky. Wives and all that bit. Teddy, sometimes I'm... I'm afraid of all of this. Why? Well, I only started in it as a lark, and now it looks as if it's getting out of hand. You're just feeling blue, that's all. Trouble's at home again? Boy, you said it. I'm sure fed up with home. Especially since my old lady married that good-for-nothing Buzz Brown. Boy, is he a lush. I didn't know that. Well, you do now. That old man of mine, you know, if anyone should ask me about him, I'd say he's got as much appeal as a stopped-up sink. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, what do you say we go home and get some rest? And tomorrow we'll get up early and go see Joe about the rods. Oh, I guess you're right. Come on, let's change clothes and get out of here. Gun. I sure do. Kid in our neighborhood taught me. What a drag. He's doing time at Warwick now. Well, I hope we don't get into trouble buying those guns. Just the opposite. With a gun, you can always fight your way out of trouble. I understand it now. Why, with a gun, you're somebody. You're getting sharp, kid. Come on, let's go. Teddy. Just a minute. Big deal. We have to wait for him.
I didn't know you had company. Fancy meeting you here. What's with your job at the warehouse? Well, I wasn't feeling so good, so I thought I'd take the morning off. I suppose you're writing out the excuses? Oh, the man can do wonders. Oh, come on, girls. Let's knock it off. Well, I'm leaving. Bye-bye, everybody. Don't forget to give Joe's regards to your boss. You girls wanted to see me about something. We came to buy the guns you offered. I offered nothing. We only talked about guns. All right, quit complaining. We've got the money. You don't say. Let's, uh... Let's see it. Take a good look. Go ahead and feel it. It's real green stuff. Sure it's not stolen money. Look who's asking. No hard feelings. Why worry, Joe? The guns in turn will get us more of the same kind of money. So what? I'm not so sure that I want to sell the guns. Man, you expect us to believe that? The only reason I'm selling them is because I need the money. You need money like I need a hole in my head. All you have to do is sell some of this stuff you keep stashed around here. It's not that easy. If I sell the stuff too fast and too often, my clients will want to pay me less each time they see me. Clients? How do you like this guy? What clients can a fence have? You're a peddler of stolen goods. Not so loud. Look, I'm a legitimate businessman. Well, maybe not so legitimate, but then I'm a businessman like anyone else. My clients don't ask me where I get the stuff. I don't ask you girls where you get this stuff. So what matters? Everybody's happy. Well, you better get set to handle a lot more stuff. Once we start putting these guns to use, we should double our business. Just not so fast. Don't get me into any trouble. You know, guns are a dangerous thing to have, especially if you don't know how to handle them. Now look, this gun opens from the top. You load five shots in there. Yeah. It's ready to go. This is different type. This loads from the bottom. Pull the clip out. Put your I bullets know how in to there. Handle a gun. All right, just watch this though, so you'll know for sure. Put it in there. You've got to pull this back before you can fire the first shot. You don't on this, but on this you have to pull it back. Understand? I'm very familiar with them. Come on, Dora. Let's conceal these weapons. Okay. It's just a matter of getting used to this trick. Wait here a minute, Joe. Take your time. Take your time. I dare any cop to reach for this gun. Go ahead. you girls to leave. Whatever you do, make sure those guns don't fall into the wrong hands. Don't worry about it, Joe. We'll see to that. And don't forget, you didn't get the guns from me. You too, remember that. I get you. Okay. On your way. I forgot my purse. Oh, Harry, yeah. Back so soon? I left my purse. Thanks, Joe.
Yes, ma'am. Could I have some change for a phone call? Certainly. Hold it right there. What? what, what, what? All right, start walking. in and out of here so one of the cops don't follow you in. Don't say. Well, what joint did you burglarize this time? We never ask you any questions. I'm a businessman. I've got to protect myself. I would, too, if I were handling stolen goods. No one asked you for an opinion. Well, you're getting it. And for free. Oh, knock it off, will you? Stuff's just common merchandise, practically no value. I don't know how I could get rid of it unless I gave it away. Hold on, Joe. We've got some other trinkets. More? Mm -hmm. I tell you, you girls are driving me nuts. You sure get mad easy. Say, this stuff looks mighty hot to handle. That's your business handling hot stuff. Yeah, but you're bringing me more than I can handle. Sorry. I thought you were somebody, not a beginner. Where do you think I keep the money to buy all this junk? In the trunk. Right handy. You're a smart girl. You don't miss a trick. Since you girls are so active and willing. I think maybe I got just the deal for you. Let's hear about it. The warehouse where Joy works. Yeah. Go on. Well, Saturday's their payday. They pick the money up from the bank Friday, hold it overnight in the safe. Soft touch for you gals. Ought to be about mm, six grand there. We'll split it 50-50. How are we going to pull a big job like that? Be a cinch. We already got joy on the inside. You might say the job of getting into the place is half done. You think of everything, don't you? Brains. That's my department. We never thought of that. Here's our chance to double-cross Joe. He's a rat anyway. Never really pays what's coming to us. Won't he be surprised? We'll split the loot amongst us chicks and leave him hanging. I wonder what's keeping Joy. She should have been here by now. Something tells me she's with big brains at the moment. That's easy to find out. Joe, just wanted to know if Joy was there. No. Uh, 
No, as a matter of fact, I haven't seen her all day. Man, you're really too much. But she was supposed to come over to my place. I, uh, I guess she must be busy working at the warehouse. And I guess only a fool like me couldn't figure that one out. Sorry. I can't stay another minute. I promised to see Teddy, and, and I'm late already. Oh, uh, what do you care? I keep my word. Okay. One more kiss before you go. You can't tell me she's not with Joe. He's as big a liar as he is a crook. Oh, I hope she doesn't take too long. I'm getting tired of waiting. Hey, maybe she's backing out. She won't back out, knowing that this job is for money. Leave it to me. I'll do the talking. Listen, chump. I don't manufacture any merchandise. What I get is what you buy. Ah, you guys are all the same. You only run a cut-rate variety store because you can buy your merchandise from guys like me. Sure, sure, sure. I know you don't run a drug store. But can I help it if my source included a batch of vitamin pills and cough medicine with their last delivery? Look, look, all you have to do is add another bargain counter. Call it a drug department. That's what Hank did last week in the town next to you. Well, I ought to know. He buys from me. Sure, you'll do all right. Okay. That's telling them, boss. No brains, just small potatoes. Yeah, I know. They ought to get peeled and boiled. Oh, you're sharp today. By the way, what's on your mind? Listen, boss. You gotta watch out. Those girls are kinda young. They can only mean trouble. Nothing to worry. It's an awful funny setup they got in that rooming house. Why, some of the girls don't even sleep there. And the rumors could get suspicious. And besides, some respectable people live there. When they move in. That's all right, boss. You're just taking advantage of my age. Just because I'm trying to make an honest dollar. Oh, I've heard that same story 20 times already. Here. Here's a fin. That ought to make you forget your troubles. Troubles? That's what's driving me to drink. No mighty good drink would come in handy at a time like this. Oh, Luke, you never change. But I like you. Thanks, boss. You wouldn't have a drink handy now, and I could save this for a rainy day. What rainy day? Who are you kidding? <laughs> okay. Say, by the way, tomorrow Don't morning... Don't drown it. Tomorrow morning... I want you to deliver 36 cases of beer to Sam's Tavern. Beer? Yeah. You mean these girls are hijacking beer now? Some sucker made the mistake of leaving the keys in his truck while he was making a delivery. No telling what they'll bring in next. Yes. I suppose they'd be stealing a corpse from the morgue any day now. There's no stopping them. Don't look good, boss. Look, will you quit your complaining? You're my right-hand man, aren't you? You're getting well paid for it, too. Don't spread it too thick, boss. I don't feel so good. Here, let me pep that drink up for you. You'll feel a little better. That ought to do it. Now, this is better, boss. Hi, kids. Got over since I could. What gives? We want to talk to you about the warehouse where you work. Yeah, what about it? We figure tomorrow night's as good a night as any to break into the place. So soon? Tomorrow's Friday. Why not? Now we have guns to protect us if anything goes wrong. Yeah, and if we get caught, I'll be to blame because I work there. You won't even go in. All you have to do is unlatch some back window while at work. Of course, you'll have to go along and show us the right window. Oh, is that all I have to do? Sounds easy enough. One more thing. We need the combination of the office safe. That should be easy for you. 
No doubt you must be the boss's pet. I thought there must be a catch to this deal. Besides, you're forgetting the main gate. Oh, no. You can take care of that, too. You can leave late, and that'll give you a chance to see that the back gate is left unlatched. Well, I don't know if I can do all that. Oh, yes, you can. Because if you don't, your mother will be surprised to learn a lot of little things about her daughter. Especially that little matter of going around with Joe. Look, I know I'm being blackmailed into this, but please leave my mother out of it. You forget you once promised us we could count on you. Well, I won't back out, but honestly, I don't know if I can make it. I've been feeling kind of sick the last three or four days. Well, hanging around Joe so much is bound to get you in trouble. I'm in love with Joe. Joe's in love with me. How nice. Does your mother know? When the time comes, he'll talk to her. I would say the time was right now. I don't know how he sidetracked into this argument. I'm sorry, Joy. Forget I said it. Well, I've got to be leaving. I'll do my best. Let's see, the window, the gate, the safe. You're a good girl, Joy. Don't forget, wear gloves. Okay. Got a cigarette on you? Just smoked my last one. She didn't look too happy. Don't worry about her. We can have her doing anything by threatening to tell her mother about Joe. It's a cinch. What we've got on her? You know it, honey. Hello? Yeah? Oh, yes, I've got it. Tonight, outside of Kelly's bar. Sure, I'll be there. Bye. Another pigeon. Let's hope a couple more call up. You know Ed Finnegan down on the south side? You mean that Finnegan who runs the Shamrock Cafe? Right. I sure do. He's a pretty good rock cutter, you know. I want you to take these stones down to him and have him cut them. Say, that ought to bring a pretty penny, boss. It's nice merchandise. Girls brought it in the other day. Now, look. This Finnegan's a chiseler, say. Here's 250 bucks. I don't want to pay a penny more. Leave it to me, boss. And Luke, I want him back tomorrow night. I got a guy that's leaving town tomorrow night. He'll take him off my hands. You'll have them. Okay, on your way. Well, isn't this cute? What do you want? Just sit still, lover boy, or I'll blow your head right off your shoulders. Grab his watch and wallet, Dora. I'll never get away with this. I'll have you both in jail within the hour. I don't think so, lover boy. Because how would you be able to explain to your wife what you were doing in Lover's Lane with little Dora? I'll take the car keys, too, so he can walk back to town and cool off. You'll never get away with this. Look, Charlie, just sit still if you know what's good for you. I'm very pleased to see that you're keeping up with your weekly visits to this office. I also note that no complaints have come to this office against your daughter. If she keeps away from bad company, she will do all right. I can assure you, sir, we are watching our daughter with an eagle eye. There won't be any trouble around our house for a long while. I'm quite pleased to hear that. But at the same time, I am ashamed to admit that families like you, in convenient circumstances, are unaware of the problems young girls face today, particularly young girls in larger cities, where pressure of modern life bears down so relentlessly on them. Human beings become criminals in their youth. Why, more persons are arrested for crime at the age of 21 than at any other age. The overwhelming majority of first offenders are in their teens. 
let me state here that it is highly important for parents today to consider that a firm foot now is much better than a firm foot too late. Would you say that parents are solely to blame if they have the misfortune that one of their youngsters has fallen into trouble with the law? Let me put it this way. It is a growing problem, and there can be no mistake as to whom it concerns. It concerns us all. There are frightening stories behind today's headlines. Stories of the young teenagers who get themselves gradually enmeshed by the crime and violence around them. I only ask that you build up enough courage to look frankly at yourselves in this particular case and develop a willingness to battle for your daughter's future if you expect her to be the respectable citizen of tomorrow. It is important to bear in mind that even girls, in whom the good far outweighs the bad, can, owing to unfortunate circumstances, find themselves descending a steep and rapid path towards a life of crime and violence. Only an aroused public fully aware of this matter is the most important single factor in combating juvenile delinquency. Jimmy, I just can't go to the dance with you Friday night. Well, why not? All the kids will be there. I know, but I, I just can't go. I've got something important I have to do. Like running around with Teddy and her friend. You leave Teddy out of this. Oh, Jimmy, Teddy's not a bad kid. She can always get a grip on herself if she has to. Well, I sort of counted on you for the dance. Oh, I know you did. But, Jimmy, I just can't go this time. I like you a lot, Dora. I still don't know whether to believe you or not. Well, I've always liked you, Dora, but you're never around anymore. Even your stepdad says you're hardly home. Oh, quit your kidding. My stepdad hasn't been home for a week. Oh, Jimmy, let's not quarrel like this anymore. I would have sworn that light was brighter a second ago. Turn it off!
A girl, eh? How did you get in here? I see you got the safe open. Come on. What's up? Okay. Since you won't talk, I'll be calling the police. Grab that box and let's get out of here. Teddy, I forgot my gun in the office. I told you never to leave that gun out of your hands. It's too late now, stupid. I couldn't let help it. Go. Check all the gates and turn on the alarm. Come on. A measly 14 bucks. You should talk. All you did was stand outside and take in the nice cool air. How do you like that? If it hadn't been for me, you couldn't even have gotten inside. A lot of good that did us. I also got you the combination to the safe. You said that's where they kept the payroll. Well, look at it. Shut up for a minute, will you? The watchman caught us, not you. Why didn't you tell us it was a flatfoot watching the joint? How should I know? If it hadn't been for you, we'd never have broken into the place. That's right. Go on. Blame me. It was your brainstorm. Ain't you girls through talking at this hour of the night? Sorry, Mrs. Murphy. And when your week's up, I want you tramps out of here. Do you hear me? Yes, Mrs. Murphy. Fine, how do you do? No money, and you have to leave your gun there. And your fingerprints all over the safe. You're just like a pal to remind me. How about yours? They must be all over the window. Me? I was wearing gloves. That's right. I clued her earlier. It's a wonder you remembered. I wonder what Joe would think if he knew about this. He'd probably laugh right in our faces. Would you like a little drink, honey? Sure. Say, I uh, picked up a little trinket that I thought you might like. For me? Nothing but the best for you, honey.
By the way, I'm going to arrange for Luke to get you another apartment this afternoon. Oh, how sweet you are. I may have made a mess of by forgetting the gun, but what do you say about the car? They'll trace it. I'll call the boys in the morning. You know, they were awfully brave to loan you that car. One favor cancels another. I wouldn't be too sure. Well, I'm leaving. I'm going home right now. If I were you, I'd beat it out of town. That's what we're going to do. On 14 bucks? Goodbye. Do you think she's going to cause us any trouble? No, she won't. She's in it as deep as we are. But what are we going to do? We'll get money from Joe and get, a, get as far out of town as we can. Oh, do you think he'll lend it to us? We'll find out in the morning. No. Please. No. Honestly, I'm not that kind of a girl. You must think I'm a cheap floozy. But I'm not. Not really. I told you to not to let either of those guns out of your hands. They're hot. All right, so we made a mistake. I knew you gals would get me in trouble. I'm going to leave town. But wait till that Joy stops around. I'll tell her a thing. What about us, Joe? You gals can make it to any town, if you're not too particular how you do it. We only wanted to borrow the money. Money? I haven't got any money. Now, come on, clear out of here, both of you. Get out, come on. Stand right where you are, Joe. Listen, this is going too far. All right, Dora. Go to the trunk and see what he's got in there, in the way of money. Who is it? It's me, Luke. You busy, boss? Yeah. Yeah, I'll see you later. Sorry it had to be this way, Joe. You're just a couple of common thieves. Don't worry about it. Helping us will bring you good luck. I hope the cops pick you up before you spend a penny of my money. They'll have to catch us first. into my joint. I know it, Joe. I'm in an awful mess. You know, Teddy and Dora forced me into this thing. You were willing. They said they'd tell my mother about my hanging around your place so much. What of it? Joe, I want to talk to you about something serious. If it's money you want to get out of town, you're too late. Teddy and Dora got it all. With the gun. No, it's something else. Maybe I shouldn't bring it up, but I just can't help it, Joe. What is it? Well, Joe, I'll have to speak to my mother. 
I, uh, I don't get it. What do you mean? Joe, I feel sick. You do? Joe, do you still love me? Of course I do. Well, will it be all right if I tell my mother about us? You better make yourself clear, Joy. Joe, don't you know what I'm talking about? Joe, you've got to tell my mother that you'll marry me. You wouldn't be getting any screwy ideas, would you? You don't care a thing about me, do you? Look, I, I thought we had an understanding. I was in the mood, and you were willing. Well, maybe we could work out something so I, I won't look like just a tramp. It was just a mistake. A mistake any girl could make. Are you trying to make trouble? I mean, I made trouble for myself. I knew better. I knew better. I just couldn't help myself. I think you got rocks in your head trying to sell me a screwy sales talk like that. But Joe, you were the only one. There wasn't anybody else. You're going to have a tough time proving it. But Joe, it was only you. Joe, please. Look, you've been alone with other guys. If you weren't having fun, what were you doing? Joe. Here, go get a druggist to give you something for it. Boy, you're rotten, through and through. Just plain no good. Get out of here. first. But a uniform officer of the law looks mighty impressive to a teenager, especially if he's guilty. The boys admit that they loaned their car to the two girls the night before. This leads to their being brought in for further questioning. Trixie? Joe? Yeah. Hey, honey, uh, why don't you come on over? Oh, you know there are no other women in my life but you. Okay. I'll be waiting. Okay. Goodbye. Mind if I change my clothes? No, go ahead. Leaving so soon? You don't think we're going to stay here, do you? By now, every cop in town knows who we are, and they're looking for us. Mm hmm Joe just told me that you kids held him up with a gun. I suppose you tried to get money from him, too. 
No, I don't want any of his money. I don't need it. I'm not afraid. If you stick around, they'll soon catch up with you. Then where will you be? She's not leaving town. Joe's going to marry her. Isn't that what you told us? That's between Joe and me. We didn't know it was that serious. Say, um, I don't suppose I could borrow your gun for an hour or so. You mean you're ready for another job that quick? Maybe. Can't you see we're leaving? Look, I don't have any money, but uh, maybe I could trade you for the gun. Trade? Why, we need all the money we can get. I'd like to loan you the gun, but there isn't enough time. Well, maybe I could trade you for um, my coat. It's a pretty good coat, and maybe you could sell it on the way. I don't know. Look, you don't want a cop to find it on you. Maybe she has an idea there. You know, anything Joe sells is hot or he wouldn't part with it. Okay, let me have the coat. Remember, if a cop finds it on you, it's yours. Don't worry. Bye. Good luck. What are you doing here? Waiting for Joe. Well, so am I. Well, wait down the hall. I came here first. Are you talking to me? Yes, you. Why, you low-down tramp. All right, now you get out of here and get out fast before I pull the trigger.
are you doing here? Waiting for you. Where's Trixie? Trixie? Is that her name? She ran out on you, Joe. Look, what do you want anyway? I thought we'd settle matters. Oh, no, Joe. We're just beginning. That's Harry. I've got a feeling the cops are already looking for us, Teddy. If they are, they're 5,000 miles in the wrong direction. You can laugh because I'm just another cheap kid who looked kind of good to you. You couldn't pass up anything that was easy to get. You're just upsetting yourself, honey. Don't honey me. A last minute bulletin just received advises that the two girls who boldly burglarized the Central Chemical Company's warehouse last night and slugged the watchman have been identified. Their arrest is expected at any moment. Come on, let's get out of here. No wonder you're so anxious to get rid of me, now that you've picked up that new girl. Let's not be ridiculous. Things like her wash up on a beach every night. I get it now. I suppose I was washed up on the beach, too. Where'd you get that gun? Look familiar? Yeah. I got it from Teddy just now. Take a good look at it, Joe. Maybe we can talk matters over. No, Joe. You're not fooling me one bit. Take a good look at the gun. Without this gun, you'd be up to your same old lies. Well, it's too late, Joe. I'm going to kill you. you you'll never get away with it. I want the police. Joe! Joe! You all right? Hello, police. I just killed a man. I'll be waiting when you get here. I'm at the Thornton Towers. Joe, it's me, Luke. You folks wait here. I'll go and get it. Crowbar, I'll get one. Come in. All right, step back this other wall, please. Come on. You going someplace? Yeah. No, you're not. Dora? Dora, it's me, Jimmy. Jimmy, I... I was hoping you'd get here in time. Please, don't talk like that. You can be all right in no time. You just got to be.
Dora, I... Please, Jimmy. There's something I've got to say. And I know I haven't much time. You warned me about Teddy and the gang. And I didn't listen. The truth is, I didn't want to. Oh, Jimmy, you were so right. And your brother, too. He's trying to help kids like me. And he's doing his best. But he can't do it alone. I don't quite understand. That's the trouble. People just don't understand. The things the girls and I did, it, it, it wasn't for the money. L look at to Teddy's folks. They've got all the money in the world. What was it for? The thrill? You tell yourself it is. And you believe it. But, oh, Jimmy, it really isn't. It, it's so hard to explain. It, it's sort of getting back at the world for so many things. It, Jimmy, when I was a little girl, my, my parents didn't want me. It, they didn't care. I, I guess I, I started life on the wrong foot. From the moment I, I, I was born, I, I was like so many others. I was an unwanted child, and, and I didn't belong. Jimmy, when you're in a gang, you're somebody. You, you belong. Oh, that's all I wanted out of life was a feeling of belonging. Was it too much to ask for? <laughs> Just to belong? Dora? Dora? Oh, my God. <laughs> the girls continue to come with no end in view. For many of them, it's no longer their first offense. This police lineup is a grim reminder to parents that one of these girls could be your own daughter. <laughs>